Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program... There's only one way out of this miserable path of sin and death, and, and it's the light and life that God gives free and full in His Son, Jesus Christ. He who forgives us of all of our sins, releases us from our proud, saves us from our self-serving ways, tells us that He, as God in human flesh, has come not to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for the many. The service will begin after this opening hymn. Pastor Craig Niemeyer from Zion Lutheran Church in Worms, Nebraska. Our beginning this morning, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, who was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us of all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. 
May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first reading for this 17th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 11. The Lord made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not know it was against me. They devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name be remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is written in James chapter 3. Who is wise in understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works and the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but it is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. They went on from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve. And he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put it in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. Third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our sermon text for this, the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, is the Holy Gospel as it was proclaimed in St. Mark's Gospel, the ninth chapter. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you all from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, we Americans, we, we love our greatness. So we encourage the up-and-coming generations with all of the slogans, go for the gusto, give it all you've got, just do it. And once a certain benchmark has been arrived at, 
We like to mark that greatness for everyone else to see. And so, for example, the employee of the month has the chance to have his or her picture plastered on the wall at work. The highest contributor to the cause gets their name with their dollar amount to top the board above everybody else. When the Super Bowl and following the parade, a trip to the White House will give you the chance to meet the president of these United States. We love being number one. We want everyone else to know of our achievement. But what is the true measure of excellence? Where is real greatness really to be found? And could it be that here in the kingdom of Christ, things do not always operate as they do out there in the world? Today in our gospel lesson, Mark chapter 9, our Savior Jesus proclaims the truth about excellence. And he shows the church, his disciples, that true greatness runs always through the cross. Mark chapter 9, the disciples are on their way to, to Capernaum with Jesus. Kind of helpful for us to remember the setting and know the background. Earlier in the chapter, with their own eyes, they have just witnessed excellence incarnate. Fresh off of the mountain of transfiguration, they have beheld Jesus with his face shining bright as the morning sun, and his clothing turned brighter than a fresh blanket of white January snow. By his transfiguration, Jesus the Christ has just revealed eternal greatness. And lest they be confused as to where this bright and shining moment in ministry is going to take him, he clearly says in our gospel lesson for today, fresh off of the mountain of transfiguration, he says that the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men and they will kill him. And when he's killed, after three days, he will rise. Now you can imagine that on that long and dusty road to Capernaum, those disciples walking with each other, following Jesus, they've got an abundance of some time on their hands, and so they talk. I imagine they talk about what they've seen, maybe the brightness of Jesus' transfiguration, maybe about what he has just been saying to them, his greatest glory to be revealed at the cross. And because... Well, because they, like us, are not yet finished products as disciples, they don't know fully yet what to make of it all. Some of these sights and some of these sounds have confused them, Mark says. And then all of a sudden, some of their talk turns in unexpected directions. I mean, they've just seen his glory revealed and heard his teaching on the necessity of the cross. And in this context, Mark says that they argued with one another about who among them was the greatest. Huh? <laughs> what to make of it? It's pride. Pride that's offended at the cross. Pride that wants to see glory and greatness in any other place other than blood and suffering and darkness at noon. Pride that deadly sin rears its ugly head in Mark chapter 9. And we know it because we see it in our own lives as well. I mean, how blessed we are, right? By our Lord's call of us and baptism of us, we are together through faith in Jesus' church. We are here in his body one. And what links us here together is not the same skin color, not the same personalities, not the same worldly interests or abilities. We confess the same sinfulness, and we share together the same Savior in common. He, our hope, the cross of Jesus, the glory of his death and resurrection makes us one. And yet, united as we are, we still know the disciples' divisive conversation. We know the, the agitation when others get ahead. We assume that it can only be on the basis of, well, their personality or their looks or their gender or their connections or their last name. They must have played politics somehow. 
We've grown frustrated to have worked so hard and honed our skills and gained the important experience only to be passed over. Nice guys finish last, we grumble and complain. Because truth be told, we want to finish first. We desire to be waited on. We want the fanfare and the acclamation and the advancements and the praise. Lusting and longing to have power and take control will even push others down in order to climb that ladder and be in what we assume is spot number one. And so Jesus will love us again today by putting our old flesh to death with him once again with a love by which he aims to rescue his people from the pride that can only divide and destroy, Jesus says to his disciples and us today with authority and finality, he says if anyone would be first, he must be last of all, and servant of all. And absolutely these teachings apply to us in the lives that we live, but ultimately, he's pointing here back to himself. It's not the word we would have expected. Such a glorious teaching, taking last place, serving others, putting you before me. Oh, these are contrary to everything that our selfish world is all about. Here, the Lord's word for today comes to us a total reversal of everything that we have been taught about rank and greatness. How can it be? Well, remember, this clear and glorious teaching comes moment after Jesus has proclaimed his own greatness by way of death on the cross. He speaks of being God and yet emptying himself, giving all making himself nothing so that we through faith should have everything in his forgiveness. Do you see that? Jesus makes himself nothing to give us everything. He empties himself to fill us up. There's only one way out of this miserable path of sin and death, and and it's the light and life that God gives free and full in his son, Jesus Christ. He who forgives us of all of our sins, releases us from our proud, saves us from our self-serving ways. Tells us that he as God in human flesh has come not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for the many. Now, that's the new life that we have together through faith. And in faith, it's also the new life that we are blessed and we get to live in Christ out there in the world. How glorious! Christ's greatness showing up in your service, in your day-to-day -day routines when you are blessed to put yourself and your goals and your desires on hold and consider also the needs and desires and aims of your neighbor. We can so serve because we are so served by Jesus the Christ, who feeds us with his forgiveness and fills our lives with his saving love. He says, if anyone is first, then he must be last of all and servant of all. It is the way to live, the way to win, the way to be truly first. For it is the way of our Lord Jesus Christ, and his way forever is life and forgiveness by means of service through the cross. In the saving name of Jesus, amen. Join me, please, in praying together the prayer our Savior has given to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for viewing Main Street Living this morning. Our hope is that you have been blessed and encouraged by this presentation. If you are able to attend local services, I'd love to invite you to worship with us and our congregation. If you're in the Worms area, north of Grand Island, Nebraska, please join us at Zion, Sunday mornings, 1015 a.m. This broadcast is supported by viewers like you and their financial help allows this broadcast to continue. You can join us by sending a contribution of any amount to this address. More information about this program can be found at MainStreetLiving.com, including links to other LCMS websites, congregation locations, and additional ways to donate. Thank you again for joining us today and have a most blessed week. We hope to see you again at the same time next Sunday on this station.